quote from John Mather. Einstein said the universe must have an infinite age. That was a mistake. The James Webb Telescope is causing a stir again and scientists are starting to run out of ideas. The telescope is once again discovering strange structures and galaxies that are older than the Big Bang. It almost seems as if the researchers are looking into a strange world that doesn't fit in with our old science. But it's the same universe again. John Mather is one of the scientists who, despite the evidence, refused to believe that the universe is possibly infinite. Albert Einstein said about 100 years ago, two things are infinite, the universe and human stupidity. But I'm not quite sure about the universe. When Einstein was young, researchers still believed in a static and finite universe in which all objects had a fixed place. Einstein was one of the pioneers of research into the true dynamics of the cosmos. He described movements, sizes, and the interdependence of forces and came to the conclusion that nothing is as fast and uniform as light. For a long time, the genius did not know whether the universe had an end or not. But the longer he researched and the more he discovered, the more certain Einstein became that the universe in which we live has a kind of infinity. These views were later revised. This led to the Big Bang Theory, the idea of expansion, and a certain end to the universe. But can this be true? The James Webb Telescope now shows us a completely different universe that calls the Big Bang into question and even shakes Einstein's field equations. Latest Discovery – Galaxy Clusters Older Than the Big Bang As if the ancient galaxies weren't enough, the Webb Telescope is constantly making new discoveries. The latest stroke of genius was the discovery of a cluster of galaxies so huge that it could not possibly have existed in the early universe. Galaxies that existed only 200 or 300 million years after the alleged Big Bang have already blown science out of the water. And you can probably well imagine what a galaxy cluster with hundreds or thousands of ancient galaxies has done to the world of science. The evidence is increasingly overwhelming, and our best scientists are being called upon to act. But many insist on the Big Bang and simply say that matter grew faster. Have you ever thought about how matter was actually created in its beginnings? Researchers imagine that the universe was incredibly hot in the beginning. Then, it slowly cooled down and many elementary particles, which had been flitting loosely through space since the Big Bang, slowly came together to form molecules. Then, clouds of gas and dust wafted through the universe for a long time until chain reactions led to ever new developments. Stars were supposedly the first matter. They were formed in glowing hot gas clouds that were set in rotation. The driving force behind all this is said to be gravity, on which Einstein also based his cosmological worldview and his relativity equations. All of this has been well calculated and simulated by scientists. However, according to these calculations, the galaxies and galaxy clusters that Webb shows us should not exist. At this point in time, the universe should still be largely empty and dark. In images showing the epoch 200 or 300 million years after the Big Bang, we should actually only see a few first stars. John Mather, the project leader of the James Webb Telescope and a strong advocate of the Big Bang Theory, has said in several interviews that he still firmly believes in the beginning of the universe. He is certain that matter was created more quickly. Efforts to reconcile the new discoveries with the star boost theory have so far failed. Star boost galaxies are extremely fast growing galaxies that produce stars in a rush. However, the quote unquote young universe shows no signs of star boost or accelerated production of stars. On the contrary, the universe and the galaxies basically do not appear much different from today's universe. Pocket universe, bubbles, or parallel worlds? You may be surprised to learn that there are a number of coherent explanations for the new discoveries. However, these theories are not necessarily the stuff that classical physicists like to hear. Many of these theories come from quantum physics and make sense there, but not in accordance with Einstein's field equations. But can we really cling to a 100-year-old set of formulas when there is real evidence that these foundations of our physics are as incomplete as Newton's theory of gravity was, for example? Let's consider alternative theories for a moment. There is enough evidence in the quantum world that the multiverse is more likely than a single existing universe that has a beginning and an end. 
It's much more likely that our universe is just one of many and that there are other dimensions in which completely different basic physical rules apply to us. Sir Roger Penrose found evidence that the universe is cyclical. It comes into being, exists, passes away, and then comes into being again. Other ideas suggest that our universe is just a kind of bubble in a much larger universe. If this is true, we would have to reach the edge of our bubble at some point and then a new space would begin. This may be the case now. The pocket universe, for which there is also good evidence, is designed in such a way that there are different plots within a space, which are like pockets whose exits lead to other dimensions. Big Bang or Steady State? Let me tell you a story about three Cambridge lecturers who saw a horror movie in 1945 that dealt with parallel times, dimensions, and life in dreams. This scary movie triggered a spontaneous recognition effect in the astronomers, and they saw in a kind of inner spontaneous realization that the universe is in some way eternal. They formulated the steady state theory, according to which our cosmos is constantly fed with matter from another dimension, thereby experiencing certain dynamics, but is by and large constant. Even if the theory has been refuted in large parts, it could still appear to be true at its core. Now that James Webb's discoveries mean that the Big Bang and expansion are slowly becoming untenable, the theory is once again attracting attention. Take black holes, for example. An incredible amount of matter gets into them in our dimension, but where does it go? Supposedly, black holes break matter down into its basic information, and this is eternal, as quantum physics has proven. There are two possibilities. At some point, our universe is completely swallowed up by the black holes, stored as information, and then spat out again, which would correspond to the birth of a new cosmos. This comes very close to Roger Penrose's idea of a cyclical universe. The other possibility is that our universe uses black holes to channel out old, used-up matter, which then feeds another universe. It's possible that our universe is in constant interaction with this parallel world, and we have just not noticed it yet. But if our universe is also driven by permanent streams of matter from another world, then we have not yet discovered these streams. Now comes the unbelievable part. Until now, researchers have not been able to prove at which boundary or threshold particles become matter and acquire their mass. For a long time, this was thought to be the Higgs boson, which was discovered a few years ago in the particle accelerator in Geneva. The Higgs field was suspected of giving matter mass which is why the Higgs boson was nicknamed the God Particle. However, researchers then discovered that the Higgs bosons are as capricious as almost all other particles in the subatomic range. The more intensively researchers observe them and try to pin them down, the crazier the particles behave. What could the new standard model look like? At the moment, we don't even know how matter is created. Something that many people also don't know is how many speculations our standard model of cosmology is based on. The standard model of cosmology, also known as the Lambda Cold Dark Matter Model, or Lambda CDM Model, is the currently accepted theoretical model for describing the structure and evolution of the universe. It combines Albert Einstein's general theory of relativity with observations of the cosmic microwave background radiation from which researchers have deduced the expansion of the universe, among other things. The standard model of cosmology is based on the assumption that the universe is homogeneous and isotropic, which means that it is the same everywhere on a large scale. This would be a compelling consequence of the Lambda CDM model, but that is not true. Over the last 20 years, we have discovered ever larger and more inhomogeneous structures in the universe that should not actually exist. The other catch, is that the old model assumes that the universe consists of around 68% dark energy, 27% dark matter, and 5% normal matter. Dark energy is also supposed to be the driving force behind the accelerated expansion of the universe. However, we can only describe the 5% of visible matter with a reasonable degree of certainty. Dark energy and dark matter elude our direct observation, and it's not certain that the two building blocks exist at all. Another interesting aspect of the standard model is the Hubble sphere, which describes the area of the universe that we can observe. The associated Hubble radius covers around 46.5 billion light years in all directions, as seen from Earth. This means that we can see a diameter of around 93 billion light years. Within this sphere, we see the universe as it was in the past. 
the further we look, the further into the past we see. This sphere grows over time as the universe expands and more and more light reaches us from more distant objects. In addition, our telescopes are getting better and better, and we can see an ever larger space. So far, there is no end in sight, and there are no signs of an evolution from a young to an old universe. The universe already appears to us to be huge, and the Hubble sphere is probably only a fraction of the entire universe. These inconsistencies, as well as the recent discoveries of very old and massive galaxies shortly after the Big Bang, pose such a challenge to the standard model that it's no longer tenable. Scientists like John Mather would like to somehow integrate the new findings into the old standard model, but so far, these efforts have been unsuccessful. But what could the new model look like? The new standard model could, for quite some time, be a state in which we have no standard model of the cosmos at all. We are entering a period of scientific uncertainty about what and how our universe really is. Subscribe to the channel now and look forward to many new videos.